How's it going, Eliminators? Today, we're going to be discussing the importance of checking your snowblower's auger gearbox for proper lubrication. With that being said, let's get right into it. So we have in front of us today what I believe is a Craftsman 924. There's not a lot of markings on it because of the condition of the auger housing there. We'll get into that. We took this unit in on a trade-in and the engine runs and it drives, which was pretty much all I needed to see. But when we engaged the auger, the second stage back there, the impeller, that spun, but the front auger didn't spin. Obviously, if you read the title, there was an issue with the gearbox. So we've had to pretty much disassemble this. The snowblower has seen better days. This thing pretty much just sat outside for long periods of time and the paint is just completely stripped off of it. So we are in the process of kind of, you know, refurbishing it. But as you read in the title, why you should check to make sure your snowblower's gearbox has proper lubrication. So check this out, guys. This thing is pretty much bone dry. There's nothing in it, okay? Now I wanna show you, this is the gasket and the gasket, there really isn't anything wrong with it. It's not ripped or torn. There is no gasket at the back. So the way that these gearboxes work is they bolt together. And then at the back of these, it is sealed up by a rubber seal. There's also seals in here and then a seal in here. So basically it seals up at the back here and then it seals up here on either side of the uh, worm gear here, which therein lies the issue. So you guys can see all of the shavings in there. Come down to the worm gear and this is soft metal. What happens normally if your shear bolts don't shear, that rotational power, as I've mentioned before, transfers down to this and this soft metal, they call it yellow metal, is uh, softer than this hardened steel worm shaft. This is your impeller shaft with your upper gear. And then here's your worm gear down here. Now I've actually done a video on how to completely disassemble, tear down one of these units and uh, reassemble it. And you guys can click in the top right of your screen if you'd like to see that. But I just wanted to do a quick video because this could have been prevented. So on this side of the gearbox cover, you guys are gonna see right there, there is a bolt. That bolt goes in right to there. And that's a grease spot. So that's where you would normally pump grease in. And you can see the design of it. They put that right where the impeller shaft is going to be. So you're gonna be putting lubricant directly onto this shaft right here. Basically, like I said, this could have all been prevented, but you guys can see that this is pretty much bone dry in here other than a little bit of grease, right? Like there's a little bit of it, but uh, you know, it's not too much. So what happened? Well, the gasket is okay. So the only thing I could think of is that the seals failed. There's like a rubber seal right here and you guys can kind of see it there. So there's gonna be a seal that goes in on this shaft and I'll show you some parts afterwards, but you know, you can replace these seals now, when you buy these housings, they come with new seals on the uh, outer edges there. I'll show you guys that too. But what would have happened is that over time, this unit would have slowly leaked out its lubrication. And then you're gonna end up getting a situation like this where it just doesn't have any lubrication and it's gonna grind away at that worm gear. So I have just an outer housing from a Cub Cadet gearbox here. And you guys can see that they do include the outer seal there. And then for the back seal, that seals up the impeller shaft. There's your part number, but I went ahead and ordered a new seal and it's just a piece of rubber that's gonna seal up in between this gearbox outer housing. And then, you know, they uh, when they bolt together, they kind of sandwich it in on that shaft. Now we'll get into what type of lubricant to use shortly. You guys have seen me use it in the past, but first I wanna talk about these you know, gearbox covers. I showed you on this one, it had that bolt to allow you to put a lubricant in directly on this impeller shaft here. On this one, you're gonna notice that there is no bolt on it. However, if we look at the casting, you guys can see that little groove up there at the top. So on this one, it would have a little 
rubber plug and then you would go ahead and pop that out and then you would fill it from the top down. Other times you may have one at the front. It will look like a you know, four-sided bolt and then you just simply loosen that off. It'll be threaded you pull that out and uh, normally you can tip your snowblower back and then go ahead and fill it up at the front there. Uh, but th some of the newer snowblower gearboxes that I've seen, they don't have any lubricating holes in them. So this is off of a Cub Cadet, like I said, and they still have this top, you know, groove machined in there for the rubber plug so that you can fill it from the top. But check out what they've done. I didn't do this. This came like this when I ordered it. They have a Zerk fitting that they've gone ahead and basically just drilled in and installed, which is, I guess, going to be a superior design. It's going to allow you to fill it from the top and also directly at the impeller shaft. Now, Imagine if you guys had one of these and you didn't notice the front side or top filling port, I guess I could call it. You could go ahead and buy Zerk fittings for a grease gun and you drill a hole to the specified size. It will say, you know, what size drill bit to use. And then you go ahead and you can tap the hole and then you go ahead and thread these in. Make sure not to over tighten it because this is aluminum. And uh, yeah, you'd be able to go ahead and grease up your gearbox and you wouldn't have to worry about this happening right there and then obviously if you guys watched that video you know when i disassembled one and reassembled it this can get quite costly depending on how easy the pulley and the bearings come off and you know how rusted and neglected things are the labor to take these apart could end up being more than you know the parts that it costs to fix this issue especially when you have a snowblower in this condition you know, one of the first things I think about is, okay, that pulley at the back might not want to come off easily, or there's going to be a bearing, which I've replaced them before, and I have a video of me replacing them, but you guys can see a little bit of penetrating oil in there. Uh, when the snowblowers are in this condition, a lot of times the entire auger assembly doesn't want to pull out from that bearing because the bearing is seized to the impeller shaft. So again, you have to get the torch out. Sometimes you destroy the bearing. Now you have to replace the bearing. And other times they just come apart nice and easily. This one, we didn't actually struggle too much, um, even though it was in this condition. But uh, yeah, that's just something to think about. Now, if we're looking at a cover like this, you can tell this bolt was put there from the factory. You know, it's it's been designed to have that bolt in. They build it out far enough so that the threads don't interfere with the shaft. On the ones that are completely sealed, you may be able to take a very shallow bolt and, you know, something like this, I would uh, maybe say, you know, cut it back as as far as you can so that you have minimal threads. You may be able to, I'm going to say, hold a vacuum cleaner and go in and drill somewhere in this area here because if you look at the design here the shaft would go right there where my finger is and you'd have this open area at the bottom that you would have a little bit of room for threads to go through and it is fairly thick material here on this particular aluminum gearbox casting so i mean ideally you would be able to have your snowblower tilt it up in the air right tilt it back and then you'd have a small little bolt right there um, you know i'm just kind of thinking out loud here on uh, what you could do uh, you know with the whole thing assembled you would just have to be very careful with uh, you know how deep your drill bit goes in but it is possible to kind of retrofit a grease port or uh, you know some type of filling port to be able to put lubricant inside of one of the gearboxes that don't have any of those uh, grease fittings or grease inlets. And sometimes you are going to get a gasket that's made out of cork. These are terrible. Um, they rip, they tear, they blow out, and I don't really prefer them. But on the Cub Cadets, this is pretty much the only thing you can get. So at that point, what I would do is you can buy a new gasket and then you could use the new gasket to cut this shape of gasket into actual gasket material. And then what I do, and I could put a picture up on screen, is go ahead and put some black Permatex RTV silicone all the way around, let it get tacky, and then go ahead and wait for the cure time and then tighten everything down. And these things never leak after that. 
They don't do that from the factory for whatever reason. They just think that these gaskets are, you know, going to be good. Another thing is that uh, some of these bolts could come loose. So it would be worth it to go around with a, you know, small quarter inch wrench with a three eighths inch socket on it and just make sure all of those bolts are tight. Sometimes you guys can see there's going to be holes on both sides. So this will have a bolt and a nut. Whereas on those Cub Cadet gearbox covers, you saw one side had like a casting put into it. So the bolts are self-tapping threads. So you have to be careful that you don't go ahead and over tighten them because then you could strip a thread on, you know, one side of your gearbox housing. And uh, obviously then that would create uh, a spot where you could be leaking some grease or oil. And when discussing what type of lubrication to use in your snowblower's auger gearbox, I would always recommend checking with your manufacturer's operating manual first if you can, because some manufacturers may suggest using something different than what I would use, and I wouldn't want you to run into any issues. But for the most part, whenever I've rebuilt an auger gearbox, I generally stick with three different brands of grease. Number one, is going to be a low temperature grease. This is similar to a soft lithium white grease. And a lot of times you'll see me put this directly onto the worm shaft and the worm gear right there. And uh, that's just to give it a good lubrication right off the bat. Um, what I would use to fill the gearbox is going to be something like this Stens double zero grease. And you can see here, it says with extreme pressure additives. We're going to get into that because EP additives, as they're called, where you can see here, Alvania EP grease is going to be an extreme pressure additive. Now, a lot of extreme pressure additives contain sulfur and sulfur can be very bad when talking about the interaction between what's known as a yellow metal. So these gears, a lot of times they're going to be made out of bronze, sometimes brass and brass a lot of times could contain up to 60% copper. You're also going to have these yellow metal bushings here. And sometimes you may even have something like a copper thrust washer. So what can happen when you have, let's say an EP grease that contains uh, an EP additive such as sulfur, when the sulfur comes in contact with this yellow metal, you can create what's known as copper sulfide. And it is extremely corrosive and it will end up eating away at the yellow metal worm gear. I can put a picture up on screen to show you guys what something like that looks like. So you'll have premature failure of that gear. And that could be directly due to the grease that you're using. Now I have Googled and I pulled up the uh, safety data sheet for both the uh, Stens Double Zero and the Alvania EP grease. And I couldn't see any mention of sulfur being used in the safety data sheet. So I'm not saying that these don't have it, but what I can say is that I've rebuilt tons of these gearboxes over the years and I primarily use Stens Double Zero grease. I have never had one come back with an issue. And again, you know, like I said, Permatex around that gasket, put them back together, makes a nice seal, replace your end seals and uh, inspect your side seals there to make sure that nothing's leaking there. If you want to purchase anything from Stens, you need a business license, but you can still buy this stuff on Amazon because there's gonna be resellers. However, something like the Mystic Low Temp White Lithium, Again, I only use that to, you know, lubricate things just briefly for the purpose of assembly. So general assembly, I'm not using it as a lubricant such as like the Stens Double Zero that I would pump into the uh, lubrication inlet there and then fill up the gearbox with the Stens Double Zero. So what I've done here is I've just put some onto my workbench and obviously you guys are gonna see that's a grease there, right? So it's going to be quite dense, even though this is a low temp. So, you know, it's really, really soft. It's still going to be a grease that's gonna be sticky and it's not going to flow all that well. Whereas you have the Stens Double Zero and the Alvania EP, and you're gonna notice here that uh, it is very kind of gooey and uh, it is almost kind of in between what 
a low temp soft grease would be and something like a motor oil. It's kind of in between. So you guys are gonna see that it's viscous enough to be able to flow, but it's going to be sticky enough that it is going to adhere to the gears and give you proper lubrication. But again, guys, like I said, I just wanted to take some time to explain this to you because I mean, this is going to be, you know, a fairly costly repair bill with labor and parts, and it could have all been prevented had my customer simply have brought this unit to me or just checked himself to make sure that there was in fact lubrication in there. And if you do have one of those gearbox cases that have those little uh, rubber plugs at the top, you go ahead and pop that out. You can use something like a Q-tip and then go in and just try to rotate it around, pull it out, and if you don't see any grease in there, then there's a good chance that uh, yours could be dry and you're gonna wanna go ahead and lubricate it. But again, you don't wanna be using the improper lubricant because this is going to be you know, impacted with snow at uh, sub-zero temperatures, so you don't wanna use a grease that's going to be too thick that's gonna to start to bind up and uh, slow down the rotation of this worm gear. That's why all of these low temp greases are so malleable, right? They're nice and soft and they flow really smooth so that uh, during cold weathers, when that stuff starts to thicken up, it still flows around those gears there to lubricate them properly. And then lastly, I just wanted to take a second to explain how much grease you wanna be putting in these things. A lot of times manufacturers are gonna call for about three quarters of the way. So if you're filling these gearbox housings up with grease, you wanna fill them to about three quarters capacity. Uh, the reason is because once this thing starts to spin, sometimes if you have those little rubber uh, plugs at the top, if you fill these things right up, it could pop the plug out and then you're gonna get a little bit that comes out. When you're filling them though, you may get tricked into thinking that your gearbox is filled. So you may go ahead and take the bottle and try to squeeze some grease in there and you may see it overflow a little bit and you'll think that it's filled up. But what could happen is there could be a big air pocket at the bottom. So what I would recommend is you go ahead and run the gearbox. So you engage your auger so that the auger is spinning and then you go ahead and you know fill it up with a little bit of grease and then you put the plug back in, run it again, and just allow that grease to circulate through the entire unit so that you kind of get rid of those air pockets and then you can always you know, make sure that you're putting in the correct amount. Would highly recommend picking up a bottle of this stuff and then you know, go ahead and just make sure that your gearbox is lubricated to prevent damage like this and an expensive repair bill. And just to wrap things up here, we ended up painting the snowblower auger housing here with some green near match paint that we got from port paint and paper it's a local paint company and all we do is take them a little chip of paint and they go ahead and wipe the paint chip down with a damp cloth to kind of clean it up a little bit and then they use a laser scanner to get the paint as close as possible we've done quite a few of these machines i know i have an older video on i believe it's a 924 craftsman as well that we painted and we also got the chute here painted up with our little new EP stickers. Check those out. They look pretty sweet. And yeah, this thing's coming together. So that's going to wrap up today's video. It's more of an informational one. But I know that while a lot of you that are regulars here on my channel know enough to go ahead and check to make sure you have proper lubrication in your snowblower's auger gearbox, some of you may not have known that they do in fact take grease. And over time, that grease can leak out due to failing seals or a failing gasket. So by following the simple tips in this video, you can ensure that you won't have to pay for an expensive repair bill the next time you go to use your snowblower. With that being said, if you guys enjoyed the video, think about leaving me a thumbs up, you know, it really helps me out. You can click here to subscribe and click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week, so be sure to stop on by next week, check channel out for new content, and as always guys, thanks for watching.